In this Affinity Designer Quick Tip, we'll be looking at eight ways to add texture to your illustrations, four in the designer persona, four in the pixel persona. Here we go. First up, we'll be using the Assets panel. An asset is a graphic that you can store and use across multiple documents. Here I've created a dot pattern. I've saved it as an asset by dragging it onto the Assets panel. And now to use it, just drag it off. And to clip it to my square, I just drag it below my square layer and then drag it to the right. I can drag it multiple uh, textures this way and kind of build them up over time just by changing the opacity or blending modes. This is great if you have multiple files that you want to use the same texture on. Similar to the Assets panel, the Stock panel uses st stock photography from several different providers. These are free images and you can rescale them, rotate them, change their opacity and blend modes. And just as with the assets, once you have it in position, you can just clip it to whatever shape you are wanting to texturize. I've made other videos that talk about how to create textured intensity brushes. In this video, I'll just show you how you can use one single uh, pixel image attached to a vector line and I'm going to use it three different ways. The first is by creating a repeating brush and by adjusting the head and tail offset in order to create a snake-like brush. And I've adjusted the opacity variance a little bit too. And then just by changing the opacity and color in the color palette you can begin to build up uh, a unique texture from one shape. Similarly, you can expand the brush width and create basically a stamp brush using that same repeat function to keep the brush strokes apart and varying the opacity and color. Again, you can build up um, a more complex texture. And the third way is to take that same shape but use the stretch brush option and that as the name implies, stretches out the brush. I'm going to adjust the colors here again. And by snaking your line around, you the longer your vector line, the longer and more stretched out that image will become. And so this is great for brush effects. But again, by building it up, you can uh, build up a unique texture from the exact same shape. Group those together and drag them under my square to mask them off. Adding textures using the style menu gives you a lot of flexibility and you can use multiple textures on top and then adjust them with dynamic controls. You see that every time I click on one of different styles, the appearance panel updates to show you how many strokes and fills are being used. So to create one of these styles, um, just start with an object. It can be blank or have strokes and fills applied and then select the gradient fill up in the type, go down to the option that says bitmap. And this is where you're going to pull in an image that you've saved or created. Uh, I'm going to pull this JPEG of celery. And you can use the handles that are provided to scale, rotate, um, and you can even change some of the wrapping features. There's wrap, mirror, repeat, which kind of stretches out things. Um, and then the zero, which basically limits just to one instance of that uh, symbol. I'm going to use the wrap function. And there it is in my appearance palette. Um, you can change the blending mode, but you can't change the degree of opacity. That's kind of one downside of this. You can add a fill, um, multiple fills. You can reposition them so that they're interacting using the, the blending mode. Once you're happy with your finalized style, you can add it to the style palette by clicking the Add Style. You can also right click on the object and scroll down to uh, Create Style. In the Pixel Persona, the first way we're going to add texture is by using the brushes as a stamp. And this one actually gives us more control than the vector option. We can change the size and rotation. Um, and we also can go to the dynamic, uh, the dynamics of the brush. And in this case, I like to use the rotation jitter and just set it to uh, random. 
And that way, every time I click the stamp, it's rotating randomly so I can build up textures pretty quickly. And there's an example, click that, it rotated and uh, change colors or build up opacity levels to create a texture you like. And then just again, just click and drag to the right of your masking object. It's pretty straightforward, but brushes in pixel mode can also be used, not as stamps, but as brushes. That gives you a lot of flexibility and a more painterly approach since you're not stuck with the single shape that the uh, stamp gives you, but you're building up a more complex and unique texture. And then when you're finished, you can mask it to your underlying shape as before. Number seven, toner brushes. I showed you how to make these in a previous video. Essentially, a toner brush is a texture that's masked and revealed by the brush stroke. So it's a static image. When you make these, you want to use a texture that's the size of your workspace, um, or you can actually repeat them as well. So they're great because the texture is static, it's right there, but you can use different brush heads to reveal that texture. And um, by overlapping the various brushes, you can create even more complexity. They're great for like comic book shading and toning, like in manga or um, other kind of illustration, such as architectural stuff. So there can be as organic or as um, precise and geometric as you'd like. This last method is kind of like a toner brush, but the downside of a toner brush is it only works in black and white and in whatever other color you apply because it is a textured intensity brush. But using an image that's colored, you can create colored textures just by dragging in, say, from the stock um, panel, or you could, of course, get it online. And then I create a mask and fill the mask with black to hide the image. Once you've got that done, you can drag that below your shape or object, and then, again, get whatever brush you'd like, click on the mask, turn your color to white, and begin to reveal that underlying texture using a variety of brushes. This is um, kind of helpful because unlike the uh, toner brushes, which have one you know, head, uh, br brush head, uh, when you use this method, you can switch between brushes, erase out using, um, the, by switching from between black and white to mask or, or um, reveal. And so you can kind of, using an underlying image, but you're also using the texture of the brush itself to reveal that image. And of course it's in color, which uh, adds a whole new dimension to your um, textures. Okay, we'll call that a wrap. I hope you learned something. Um, if you did, give me a thumbs up, drop me a line in the comments, and we'll see you next time.